I feel fine. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, when you when you rack, you're going to be a little sore, but from um, <clears throat> I mean, I felt fine when I got out of the race car and, and, uh, you know, Monday I was a little sore and I was still able to do my workouts and everything I wanted to do and woke up today and I felt fine. So, um, just obviously the, uh, the mindset is everything's looking, looking forward to, uh, to Dover and, and hoping that, hoping that we get qualifying in because as, as a lot of you guys know, track position is, is huge. And we, unfortunately, <laughs> haven't been able to to get the amount of points that we've been working towards. So, um, but yeah, no, I feel good. Curious if you've looked at the in-car camera from some of the, from your accident and, and kind of how violently you moved. And I'm curious if that, if you've talked to anybody yet, or is that considered normal or abnormal to uh reaction in that wreck? Um, well, I can tell you, I lived it firsthand experience and, and then going back and seeing it. Um, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly, you know, it doesn't, you're wrecking and it, it never feels great, but, um, all the safety, all, you know, everything that everybody does to mount my seat and, and the seat belts and, and everything that you do in precautions for, you know, a wreck like that, everything did its job. So, um, I'm, I'm going over to, uh, the R and D center tomorrow after our sim session, to, to go over the, uh, the wreck with them and, and kind of let them know what, you know, how I felt during it and after it. And, and uh, obviously, you know, NASCAR is working to, to keep evolving and keep, you know, keeping us drivers safe. I think that's obviously always the number one priority is, is making sure none of us get hurt. And um, so, yeah. And I, I'm curious, do you, you know, a lot of us look at what Larson's car and are like, wow, like, you know, how did that happen? Is there, you know, if anything does, there, if anything needs to be changed, do you get involved in those type of discussions? Are you, do you want to know where, you know, what's being done or are you like, look, I'm strapping in this car. I'm interested in what my cockpit's <laughs> like, and I'm just going to go race. You know, there's a lot of, it's, uh, it's tough to say, like at the end of the day, I want to know, you know, about my race car and, and, and those things. But yeah, I, I am 100% just, if I feel comfortable in my cockpit, you know, I feel safe. So, um, you know, anything outside of that with car structure and, and, and those items, um, I can only protect the things that, that are in my little realm. And I make sure that I try to, uh, feel as, as comfortable and, and as safe as I can in, in there. So, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I got up yesterday at six 30 in the morning, I came here to SHR, I worked out, I did all those things. So, um, you know, very, very, very lucky to have a great group of people putting uh safety first and at, at this organization and, and, um, you know, I'm okay. Thank you, Bob. Let's go to Marty Sakala. Go ahead, Marty. Thanks, Dan. Ryan, glad to see you. Uh, okay, after that incident, um, you mentioned post race out of the infield care center about having these good runs lately and then getting wrecked. You've been battling real, real hard near the front, at least in the last three races. How much does that motivate you entering Dover, trying to get that first top 10 of the season and maybe even a win? Yeah, it's it's frustrating um, because we've had an, a lot of races where we've had good speed, we've had you know, I've always said that you got to start with top 15s or top 10s and consistently running there and then top fives and, and chasing wins. Right. And, and, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, especially the past four weeks that we've had cars and, and we've had, we've been putting races together, uh, to have opportunities like that. And then just, you know, at the end of the race, a lot of things that just, chaos breaks out and and sometimes you're the bug and sometimes you're the windshield and ultimately it'll be nice when we're we're the windshield not the bug but um I'm I'm proud of the fact that you know our team our pit crew uh Chad's doing a great job and everybody our engineers are are working you know together and that's what it takes and um but as <clears throat> I don't know if many of you guys uh listen to Denny's podcast but that's something that I've 
enjoyed listening to because of his honest opinion of of what it takes to win at this level now and and how much the the sport has kind of evolved it 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 doesn't always take the fastest car to win anymore now it takes execution so that's something that um you know i i know i've been focusing on for the past week or so and and really just kind of turning turning you know, my attention more so than ever to the little details that it takes to, to make sure that, you know, when lap 380 is there, that you're still giving yourself an opportunity to have a chance at it. Following up on uh, Denny's podcast, he's been giving out ideas, not just on there, but also Twitter for a bracket-like competition that pays out a bunch to the winner and to anyone who has a perfect bracket, a little bit similar to a direct TV did with the head-to-head challenge in 2010. What's your take on it? Would you be down for that a little fun competition during the summer? So I haven't heard the details yet. Um, obviously, I've been seeing some posts on it, <clears throat> but uh, a midsummer class like like something like that that'll create excitement. I think you have to be very um, willing to to try things, and and anything that creates hype is is never a bad thing, right? But um, without knowing any of the details, I don't I don't really know, but. Um, it certainly, it sounds uh, pretty interesting. Looking forward to seeing you this week and best of luck. Thanks. Thank you, Marty. Let's go to Nathan Solomon. Hello, Nathan. Thanks, Dan Ryan. Appreciate you taking some time here and, and following up on, on a couple of questions ago, you know, you mentioned the NASCAR is a five car, NASCAR has your car. So when they're looking at cars and, and trying to piece together kind of what happened in that wreck, what do you hope that you can learn in, in NASCAR? car can learn and really everybody can learn about kind of what what can happen and or what happened and, and what can be done to kind of increase the safety and incidents like that well i think um you know i don't design race cars but i right now you obviously feel the impact um it was it was probably one of the toughest hits that i've ever taken in a race car and and i've hit uh, i've hit walls you know with hung throttles on concrete you know concrete walls that have dirt behind them and and i'm sure kyle's taken you know heavy hits or or big flips in the past so anything that we can do to to kind of keep working to lessen the impact that we feel as a driver is is certainly um is certainly going to help but uh as far as kind of what they they do with the information they're gathering and and Hopefully it's something that's going to benefit us drivers uh, sooner than later. And then looking ahead to this weekend, Dover is one of the races you did last year. So is it beneficial at all to kind of have that notebook uh, to an extent from the next gen car? Yeah, that's actually a race um, that I've been stressing to Chad about. I really felt like we had such a good race car uh, last year and, and just never, we never got track position and we never, um, we actually had a tire go down a couple times. And, and then I believe when AJ lost a tire during the green flag pit cycle, we lost a lap or two laps or whatever it was. And it just kind of dampered our day. But from a speed standpoint, we were really fast in practice and we had a great race car. So, we, um, you know, I feel like uh, some of our baseline of what we've decided to take this weekend uh, strongly goes off of that. And, and I have high expectations just uh, as you all know, it's it's Dover and it's April and it tends to rain a lot up there. So hopefully we we can miss we can we can at least get practice and qualifying in or something for us and and uh, not have to start 30th and, and work your way back up the entire race. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. Thanks. Let's go to David Hoffman. Hello, David. Hey, Dan. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Ryan. Uh, I know kind of basing off of Marty's question earlier, I mean, you've been beat up a couple of times already this year, just mentally, what keeps you going despite the start of the year that you've had? Uh, I would say the speed standpoint of, of that, you know, it's not like we run 25th to 30th and, and just have bad days, right? It's, you know, Coda, you're running top seven or whatever it is in Richmond, you're, you're pretty much around the 10th to 12th all day and Bristol, you have a great heat race and run pretty well. And, and then, uh, you know, Martinsville, you get the pole. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not like you're just frustrated and you don't have speed and you're getting poor results. It's just, sometimes there's things that you try to control that you can't control. And, you know, you just got to wake up on, on Monday morning and, and reset. And, and that's something that I try to do within our team is 
lead by example, right? So if, if I stop showing up and I stop doing the things that, that I should be doing, well, then everybody else is, is going to do the same. So I try to make sure that every, every Monday is a new week. doesn't matter if it was a good day or a bad day. It's, it's business as usual. Thanks, Ryan. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. Boy, did that sound a little bit like Kevin Harvick every week. Just do the same thing. So Kevin says, you just do the same thing week to week. Well, I've heard that quite a bit, you know, He's right. He's rubbing off which, you know yeah. Kevin's been a really, really great teammate for me and somebody that I really lean on. So I guess, I guess it's really starting to rub off here. Soak it in. It's a good thing. Let's go to Kyle Dalton. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. So um, going back to the accident, uh, first of all, do you wear a mouthpiece? Cause I know multiple drivers do wear mouthpieces. Do you wear one? I, I do not. Okay. So my second question is, did your head hit the steering wheel? Because on the replay, it's really hard to tell, but it looks like it comes very close to hitting the steering wheel. I got to be honest with you. Things happen really fast in a race car, and I I don't think so. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. But, uh, I mean, as you can see, didn't didn't change a whole lot with me sitting right here. Sure, sure. Okay, yeah, I was just curious because it was it was hard to tell. So you you I think you categorized it as P1 on your all-time hits. So I mean, what do you what do you take about take away from this as far as the safety because you got out of the car, Kyle got out of the car. I mean, I think everybody's been very critical of of the next gen car, but when it comes to an accident like that, both of you guys walked away. So what does that say and speak to the safety of a, a na actual next NASCAR next gen car? Well, I think there's always things you can you can do to improve, right? There's there's way that that we can help us drivers. Um, I feel like I, I'm pretty freaking tough when it comes to taking the, taking hits or whatever. So um, I feel good, but I, I mean you're you're still sore. It's not like you're not. So there's certainly things that we can do uh, to continue critiquing and and making the car better. So um, that us drivers, you know, we aren't as sore or whatever if other drivers feel, you know, however they crash. Something that my body does naturally, apparently, after watching this wreck is they last year they talked of drivers pushing their head back uh, before they wreck to make sure that they didn't slam their head and, and cause a concussion. Well, my body just naturally does that before impact. So I'm very lucky that an instinct of mine is to brace and, and I don't, you know, um, I don't get any, or I haven't gotten a concussion. So, um, so to speak on that, yeah, Kyle and I are very lucky. We're, we're lucky that, uh, we're able to help the process to continue to, to make the car safer. And, but yeah, I mean, we both wrecked and, and we're okay. So it's good. Thanks. Good luck this weekend. Thanks. Mitchell Brewer. Hello, Mitchell. Go ahead. Ryan, as somebody that came back to the Cup Series this season, with all the chatter that, that there is about how long this Cup Series schedule is and how there's not a lot of breaks, has there been much of an adjustment for you getting back into the swing of a full-time schedule, or has that part-time schedule that you ran last year, were, was that able to help you stay focused for mm -hmm. such a long time? Yeah, so me, um, racing once a week, has, has been something out of the norm for me. Uh, usually I'm used to racing, you know, two, three, four times a week, like, or five times a week, like some of the other guys. And, and then when you get to this level, it's you're focused on one division, pretty much one car and, and you're racing once a week. So last year was more of an adjustment, not racing all the time than it was this year going into, to being in that groove and, and, you know, having a, um, not a schedule, but a routine, so to speak. So, I would say this year has been easier to adjust to than last year. Thank you. All right, let's go to Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Hey, um, Ryan, I'm curious. Uh, Riley Herbst was on beforehand and, and talked about his accident uh, in, in, I'm not saying it's exactly the same way, but some similar circumstances as yours. And one of the things he said is after that accident, look at adjusting the, the belts a little bit um, and just kind of making the changes in response to what happened there. Obviously, as you said, you're, you're fine and you came out great in this. Are there any adjustments that you make um, after the, going through this experience in, in terms of 
or is is it, hey look you're here and everything worked as as way it should and no need to make any changes it's funny that you you say this um <clears throat> you know kevin called me yesterday and we were kind of talking about uh one of the things he said is man you moved a lot and i said yeah i guess i i got a lot of mass that that those seat belts have to hold in but um no i mean it's Kevin made a great point yesterday because I, I was under the, I kind of had the opinion that everything did its job. I feel great. Um, so why change anything? But he brought up the point of you can always make it better. You can look at this as, okay, well, how do you feel here? What can you do different with your belts or your Huns or, or whether, so something I do as a driver is I don't clip my, my shield all the way down um so if there was an event you know you you probably want to do that what's stopping you from doing that so kevin's really good at helping you raise questions to yourself and and to continue pushing whether that's safety performance or whatever so um yeah so going back to answer your question there's a few items that i'm gonna go back and look at and and say hey can we can we look at maybe changing this or this but um i still am really happy with uh you know everybody within shr that that mounts my seat or the way we put the seat belts and and the you know the devices that we use for safety i'm i'm proud of of the job they do because at the end of the day i'm i was able to do everything that i wanted to do yesterday uh forgive me just follow up is you talked about not clipping your visor not being a driver i don't know why why one would or would not um why hadn't you in the past and i'm guessing now that's something you'll probably clip the, the visor to kind of prevent can you talk me through that please yeah. well just for me it's it's a habit i never i've never clipped my visor completely down now that's a half inch of area i i don't know i can't necessarily give you an honest answer of or not necessarily an honest answer i can't give you an answer of why i do it i just do it so it's um yeah it's just what i do Okay. And I'm curious, um, when there's a, a big event like this, I guess in my mind, I almost imagine like when you win a race, you get a lot of text messages, everybody's congratulating you on something like this. I almost wonder if your phone is blowing up in the sense of, hey, I hope you're okay, or thank God you're okay, or or things like that. What was that like? Or am I wrong in assuming that something like that happens? No, you're right. Uh, so quick little story is my house actually got struck by lightning two weeks ago. And uh, so my my internet in my garage, which I if I don't have internet in my shop, uh, I don't have a cell phone signal. So I have to leave it at the window. So yes, to answer your question, my phone kept going off and I kept having to walk from what I was doing over, you know, which you're thankful for, you know, people caring, right? I got a lot of text messages from people with different organizations, a lot of drivers, a lot of people I used to race with. So um, yeah, no, I, it was, it was a lot more uh, text messages than I really thought I was, I would get, but it was certainly, um, you know, people want to see you. Okay. I guess. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, Ryan, we're going to close it out here with Kelly Crandall. Kelly, you get the last questions for Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Ryan, I apologize. I jumped in late. So you might've answered this, but <clears throat> NASCAR said, obviously they have the five and then Stuart Haas, of course, brought your car over to R and D. Um, what conversations, if any, are you having with NASCAR, just a feedback <laughs> or questions that you have um, of what happened and what they're finding? Uh, yeah. So um, I know, from what I believe Kyle's probably gone over there uh, yesterday and uh, I'm going over there tomorrow uh, to kind of just go through what I felt and how I feel and, and just some of those things just to, to give them my input and then, you know, kind of let or them give me their, their analysis on everything. So uh, obviously we don't ever want to be in a what happened situation of, of where we have bad conversations. Uh, we're very lucky that that Kyle and I can can go over there and we can use this as a moment to continue evolving this car and making it better. And and um, but yeah, so that's uh, I'll have my conversations tomorrow. Thanks. And um, the other thing, and, and again, apologize if this was asked, is obviously um, you drivers know what you do is 
you know, not safe, right? It could be dangerous. It, you can, you're going to take some hard hits. When you take a hit like that on Sunday, though, is it was that one of those where it kind of just was a, a, a jolt or a shock to the system of um, just how fast and just how hard and just how dangerous this is? Well, I think it certainly puts perspective to to people. Um, you know, us as drivers, you don't want to take any more risk than you already are, knowing you are. Um, but it is a, you know, it's uh, whether it's an unpopular opinion or, or answer that I'm going to give, it's still dangerous. This is, this is a, a sport where every time you put that helmet on that, that there's risks that are involved to this job. So, um, I understand that I've always understood that, which is why you tend to race a certain way. And, and try not to ever put your fellow racer or anybody in, in a bad situation to where you ever have to be a part of something like that. So, um, but yeah, no, I mean, we, we're all a little crazy to, to do this and, and we love it for a reason. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky and I understand that uh, every week to be able to be at NASCAR's top level and, and perform this and do this.